This episode of Inside Louisiana Athletics is brought to you by Park Place Surgical Hospital. Hi, I'm Marcel Johnson. Tonight on Inside Louisiana Athletics, a complete sweep for both men's and women's basketball this past weekend. Our Darren Walker sits down with head coach Gary Broadhead to discuss women's basketball upset wins in Jonesboro. But first, men's basketball have put themselves in prime position for the number one spot in the Sunbelt West Division. You're watching Inside Louisiana Athletics. Louisiana's Raging Cajuns take a couple of home wins in Sunbelt Conference play over the weekend. They defeat Arkansas State 81-68 in the opener and hold on for a 77-74 win in the second game. I'm Dan McDonald, along with my partner Eric Mouton. And Eric, picture of two games. The first game, Cajuns rallied in the second half and put together a big win. Second game, they put on a display in the first half, then had to hold on at the end. It's going to be one of those seasons, Dan. We've, we've seen a lot of splits. Louisiana today and last night able to get the sweep. That's going to be huge for them in conference play. Friday night game, Cajuns took that 13-point win, mostly on a second half when they outscored Arkansas State 54-37. to Cedric Russell and Theo Akuba combined for 33 points in just the second half, 50 in the ball game. The big two were huge. They got it done late for the Raging Cajuns. And Coach Marlin with the defense, always stressing defense, making free throws, that's going to win games for you. Cajuns shot 46% in that game. They held Arkansas State under 30% in the second half, and that was big defensively. That's what they want to do on defense, and they're a great rebounding team. Their rebound margin has been outstanding all year, and they got it done again last night. The second game, that on Saturday afternoon, Cajuns built as much as a 20-point lead early in the second half. They led by 12 at halftime. They were putting on a shooting exhibition. Then Arkansas State, they played gritty. They rallied back. They really did. They never quit. They continued to get stops, got right back in this ball game. A huge shot in the arm on the offensive end by Jacoby Gordon. Did not miss a shot. He was 5-for-5, five 4-for-4 five, four four from behind the arc and had 14 points. He and Cedric Russell both with 14, leading five Cajuns in double figures as Louisiana improves to 11 and four overall, five and three in Sunbelt Conference play. For Louisiana basketball, I'm Dan McDonald, along with Eric Mouton. Back to you, Darren. Thank you, Dan and Eric, for that recap and the great work you guys have done all season long on the broadcast. Here now to talk about the weekend sweep of Arkansas State is the Director of Operations, Mike Murphy joining the show. First of all, welcome. Uh, let's talk about uh, uh, Coach Marlin, first of all. I would imagine you've had a chance to speak with him. Uh, he does have COVID at this time. Um, tell us, aside from being away from the team, how's he feeling? Coach is feeling well. He has mild symptoms. Um, it's tough when the boss is away, especially <laughs> when you're in the middle of a, of a conference season where you're playing back-to-back -back nights. But he's feeling fine, and hopefully we'll get him back uh, sooner than later. All right, let's get into the details of the weekend. Game one, you win this one by 13, but you trailed by four at the half. And there's a quote that Coach Marlin came in the locker room and basically asked a question to the team. He said, hey, is this a, a basketball game or a three-point shooting contest? At the time, y'all were one for 12 from three-point range. But inside the arc, you guys were shooting 50% and keeping it close. We were, and anytime you have someone like Theo Akuba in the lane, at the rim, you want to get him as many touches as possible. We were settling for too many three-point shots early in possessions, which puts a lot of stress on your defense. Only one player made a three in the entire game, and that was Cedric Russell. Uh -huh. The rest of the team was 0 for 16. We were 3 for 19 as a team. I've got a public school education, <laughs> but that's not a real good percentage, right. especially when you got a guy shooting a really high percentage in the paint with Theo. We made some corrections going into the second game, and, and obviously there was a different outcome. Yeah, Cedric had uh, 26 on the night. He's shooting the ball much uh, better as of late. And you mentioned Theo. He had a career-high 24 points. He also had 10 rebounds for the double-double. Also uh, pitched in three blocks. And, you know, that complimentary basketball where you got a guy who's hitting from the outside and a guy who's hitting from the inside, it's hard to stop that. It really is. And anytime you can make a three, Jacoby Gordon was four for four playing the four spot. When that four player can stretch the floor defensively, it makes it impossible for another team to put two players on a post player like Theo, mm -hmm. who, who with one-on-one -on -one coverage is really, really good. Mm -hmm. So anytime you can stretch the floor with a four player making threes, it opens up the inside game. And we're very fortunate to have a player like Theo who can really finish at the basket 
and deter a shot as well on the defensive end, right. not to mention his rebounds. But having a four, four player that can make threes really stretches the defense. Cedric and Theo accounted for 50 of the 81 points. Malik chipped in 10. Uh, and then for the second time in three games, you had a new low turnover number, only nine, which is the lowest for the season. When you're uh, valuing those possessions, that's huge. Well, especially when you're shooting the ball well. We mm -hmm. were 11 for 18 from the three-point line. Theo was dominating the inside. And when you don't turn the ball over, you get more possessions. We only had nine for the game. I think we had seven in the first half. So the adjustments we made at the halftime really paid off in the second half. But once again, I go back to this. When you have a four player who can make threes, it stretches the floor and it really stresses the defense. Mm -hmm. And then when you have players who can make threes on a consistent basis, we have three players now who are combined seven for seven. Jacoby Gordon was four for four. Ty Harper was two for two. And Devin Butts was one for one. And, you know, Cedric Russell, you know, had a great weekend. I think he was something like three for six or something like that. So, you know, the three-point line, when you make shots, really opens up your offense. It stresses the defense and, right. and you know, it just makes things a lot easier. Yeah. Second game, you win that one only by three. Uh, and in the first half, it was kind of like you picked up where you left off on Friday. You jumped out to an early 15-point lead, extended it to 19. Uh, you were shooting 59% from the floor and 64% from three-point range, just a lot of things going in the basket. Yeah, you know, coaches become a lot smarter when you make shots, <laughs> in case anybody didn't know, you know. We become a lot smarter when guys make shots. Now, the key to making shots is taking good shots. And I thought we did a really good job of that on Saturday. As we alluded to earlier on Friday, we were taking way too many threes early in possessions off of one pass. And that just, you know, that, that's a disaster waiting to happen, especially on the defensive end, because it creates too many fast possessions, too many quick possessions or empty possessions that we call it in the coaching biz, where you come up with nothing. Now you got to go down the other end of the floor and play defense against a team who's really good at the guard spot, mm -hmm. who puts a lot of pressure on your defense because they get the ball down the floor so fast. So the second half, we were much more uh, patient on offense. We took good threes. We took what the defense gave us. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we were able to shoot a high percentage. But I use this, uh, coach uses this all the time too. Good shooters take good shots. Great shooters make good shots. And that's what we had Saturday. Jacoby Gordon, you mentioned him earlier. He had a big first half. There was a stretch in that first half, about three minutes long, where he hit uh, on 11 points right there. Um, you know, you guys know what you're going to get out of Malik and Cedric and Theo, probably points wise but it's who's going to be that other guy who's going to chip in, and that day was uh, Jacoby. That's exactly right. You've got to have a fourth score in order to make your offense balanced, mm -hmm. and we had that with Jacoby on Saturday, and the results obviously allowed us to get, get out to a very big lead in the first half as well as the second half. We hung on at the end, but the bottom line is either you win or you lose, and because of Jacoby's scoring, we had better balance on offense. I want to mention one more guy, Ty Harper. He had 11 in this one. Uh, true freshman comes in. Uh, gives you uh, 11, I believe. And uh, more importantly, though, he, he comes in at the very end with the game on the line, having to shoot four free throws. He made three of them. He didn't get them all, but he made three of them. And that turned out to be the difference in the ball game at the end. It really did. Brian went out with an injury. Mm -hmm. So Ty had to play extended minutes, especially in the second half when the game was getting close. And when games get close, guys tend to pucker up. But he came through Let's not forget, this freshman's only been with us for a month. Right. So he learned something new every day, and, and we were very proud of Ty's effort. He did a great job on Saturday. On to San Marcos now for two with Texas State. The Bobcats lead the Sun Belt West. The, you guys and, and the Bobcats are the two hottest teams in the conference. I believe they've won five. You guys have now won four. Um, but you guys have had a chance to play these guys a couple of times already. I guess this might be the closest thing that you guys can get to an NBA type of um, playoff series where you're playing the same team a number of times in a short period of time. Um, just talk about the Bobcats and what you're going to face with those guys. Well, it was a really tough series when they came when they came here. We opened up with Texas State here at home and uh, won the first game in overtime, lost the second game, and, and really you got to tip your hat to Texas State. They beat us in the second game. Mm -hmm. But um, this is a, a team that, that uh, is experienced. A lot of guys back from last year's team. They're very good at the guard spot. Their post play is very efficient, and they have depth. And right now they're playing with a great deal of confidence. So it's going to be a, uh, it's gonna be a challenge. But it also gets to your point about an NBA schedule. This is where this series is so important because of tiebreaker situations at the end. Remember, we don't play anybody from the East 
Everybody we play is on the West. Mm -hmm. You play everybody four times except Monroe, you play them twice. So this is where when you start splitting series, tiebreakers become very, very important. So if we can go up there and win on Friday, you know, we'll worry about Saturday, but your focus has to be Friday, but the tiebreaker situation is going to be very unique at the end of the year because of the way the schedule is set up. Yeah, adjustments are going to be critical Huge. in this series Huge. for sure. All right, Coach, thanks for the time. As always, best of luck to you this weekend. Go ahead and catch the Cajuns and Bobcats on ESPN Plus this weekend. Gay okay, down low to Akuba again. Looking for the drive, turn around, off glass, no good. But Akuba comes away with the offensive board. Puts up a tough shot up and in. Split a couple of Arkansas State defenders. And Bob Marlin now takes a quick timeout. Next on Inside Louisiana Athletics, Darren Walker sits down with head coach Gary Broadhead to discuss women's basketball picking up wins in Jonesboro and look ahead to playing at home for the first time since December 9th. This has got the steak and the sizzle. The tots on this are just crispy and they're flavorful. This will oh. keep you out of my tots. Sonic Extra Long Ultimate Cheese Steaks. Yeah, this might keep me out of your tots. Come see the good guys and discover the courtesy experience at Courtesy Buick GMC in Lafayette. Get a 2020 Buick GX for $17,988 or a 2021 GMC Acadia for only $26,988 at Courtesy Buick GMC in Lafayette. We all have dreams. I want to dance. I like to build things. I want to explore. For over 120 years, the University of Louisiana at Lafayette has made it possible for young dreams to become realities. So go ahead, dream big. We'll help you make those dreams come true. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it, then your feet will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it, manger. If you're happy and you know it, manger. If you're happy and you know it, nothing that will help you show it. If you're happy and you know it, manger. Zydeco. Zydeco. To perform, you need speed, skill, strength. With every muscle, every move, you push your body to reach its full potential. But sometimes, you just can't push through the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team. Courtesy Bruce Art is more than just a dealership. It's an experience. It's one of the largest inventories in Louisiana. And of course, it's always incredible deals. Get a 2020 Chevrolet Equinox for only $19,988 or a 2020 Chevrolet Trax for only $16,988. Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Athletics. A statement made in Arkansas this weekend as the Raging Cajuns women's basketball team takes all three games in Arkansas. Two in Jonesboro, one in Little Rock. And here now to talk about all of it is the road weary but happy yeah. head coach sure. Gary Broadhead. So when we last met, uh, you know, we talked about how it was going to be 20 days between games and how there was somewhat of a, a bit of a concern there having that long layoff. But boy, it just it didn't seem to matter. Yeah, it did. You know, and I didn't realize uh, what to expect. To be honest with you, you know, it's like I was asked if. Uh, if I felt like a kid in a candy store because we hadn't played in so long, but I was actually more nervous than I, I was nervous more than, than usual because of the uncertainty on how we were going to play and how, if, if we were prepared. But I think it, it, now with the thing that I learned, if you got experience, man, those kids can adjust to situations a lot better than the non-experience. And I think that's what ended up happening. We might not have played the perfect game, but we were able to adjust as the games went on, and I thought that was important. Friday night, not surprisingly, a very tight game in the first half. 
um, but you had 13 second chance points, and uh, and you really uh, in your corner that helped you keep it just a two point game at half. Yeah, there's no doubt. You know, I thought uh, our pressure and making them play it to our tempo helped. But you know, it's always about us. You know, we're always a little bit on the smaller side. We play small ball, mm -hmm. so when we can we can limit them one shot by getting those rebounds, I think those are big big keys. You know, and. Every adjustment that we made, you got to give credit to the kids. You know, they 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 were able to adjust to the situation, even though there were some runs. You know, I was very pleased in in how um, we were able to adjust to the situation. Right. It's one thing for you to tell them; it's another thing for them to go out and execute that plan. In the third quarter, you take control. You outscore Arkansas State by 13 to take a 15-point lead into the fourth quarter. But then Arkansas State comes right back. you got to give them credit. They're a good team. They come right back to tie it up. They send it to overtime. But Brandy Williams with a big three-pointer to put you up with 139 to go in overtime, and you wind up getting the win. Yeah, there's no doubt. You know, it's like we, uh, we the adjustments we made uh, defensively toward the end, and that's what we were talking about was can we make stops? Because they went on that run, and, man, we just – it seemed like we couldn't make any stops. And, uh, you know, kind of coming together and saying, hey – to win this game, we're going to have to make some stops toward the game. It's not going to be about scoring. It's going to be about trying to make sure that, uh, that we're able to finish off those stops with those rebounds and all that. And I thought the kids, I mean, the players just did a phenomenal job to finish the game. Jomira Mathis had 17, Skylar Goodwin 16, Ty Doucette with 8 points and 12 big rebounds. You just alluded to the rebounds. 12 rebounds for her, and the Raging Cajuns win at 67-65. Obviously, you didn't want to play an overtime game to start this three-game uh, series, but you go to game two on Saturday, and what a first quarter. You shoot 53% to take a 22-8 to eight lead right out of the gate. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, we, I, we, we kind of extended our pressure even more uh, going into that game. And, you know, it's funny how when kids see success from something you do, they able to kind of buy into it. And, man, they, they were wanting to press, which is kind of odd for us a lot of times. You know, we kind of, kind of, you know, pump them up and motivate them to do it. They were motivated already, so I think that helped us uh, to, to also when you're making shots, man. That, that you know, our offense was was clicking. I thought we we took advantage of some of the things that Arkansas State gave us, and we were able to make shots. So I mean, those things kind of work hand in hand. But it was a great first quarter for sure. That lead would be trimmed to 11 at the half, and then in the third, the Red Wolves would chop it all the way down to one, and um, they were not going to lay down for you, Coach. They were battling, too. But in the fourth quarter, things just seemed to turn your way again. You pull away from them. Skylar Goodwin was huge in the fourth quarter with eight of her 14 points. Yeah, there's no doubt. You know, she, she's like our quarterback on our club. You know, she runs the points. She plays the two, three, sometimes at different positions and stuff. But at the end of the game, the ball was in her hands. You know, I thought she did a good job of take, not only taking care of it, and the whole team. I thought our turnovers were really down when they really needed to be no live ball turnovers to give up scores. Uh, so yeah, she she was big. You know, she was actually big in all. I mean, all those seniors were really big in all the games, and you know, it's, it's good to see you know coming back from not playing into playing and see how effective they really were. Right. You win this one a little bit more comfortably by 12. Brandy Williams led the way with 18 points. But the stat that I really want to talk about again, 11 offensive rebounds, which led to 10 second chance points. And you can't really put a value on having those extra possessions. No doubt. You know, we, we're a big team about trying to get back on defense. We don't want to give up layups and all that. So a lot of times we send two or three. Mm -hmm. And just the last... Uh, you know, a couple of, well, actually a month or so, we started kind of evaluating what we were doing. And we now we're starting to send uh, everybody on the boards except for one. And I think that's kind of paying off for us because mm -hmm. we are uh, getting more offensive rebounds and second chance points. Then on Monday in Little Rock, again, uh, third game in four days, a tough start for your squad. You trailed 17-6 after the first quarter. All of your points came from the free throw line, but your team comes right back in the second quarter to shoot 50% score 19 points and only trail by two at the half. And I thought they showed a lot of uh, just grit and mental toughness to be able to just forget about what happened in the first and produce in the second. No doubt is what you're saying, the mental toughness. You know, I think that's a big part of playing at Little Rock because they're so defensive oriented. You know, they try to punch you in the mouth from the beginning and they play physical. Right. It went from a finesse game with Arkansas State to a physical game. And for us to adjust, it took a little while. We, uh, you know, the first quarter to, to adjust, 
before we, you know, we started to be productive on the defensive side. Mm-hmm. You know, we re- really weren't very productive on the defense, and we weren't making stops the first quarter. And you know, got to give credit to the kids, man. They just, it's a long game. You know, that's what we kept preaching. You know, we're not going to get it back in two or three minutes. It's going to take all 40 minutes to maybe 30 minutes to get it back. And, right. uh, you know, they stuck with the plan. And it took a good 25 minutes before we finally took the lead. Right. Uh, the game went into the fourth quarter. Uh, the Trojans had a five-point lead with 6.04 to go. But after that, it was all your team. 17-3 to three run to finish the game. Destiny McAfee with nine points in the quarter. And you guys win the third one. Yeah, no doubt. You know, De- Destiny was big. I mean, she played 20 minutes and scored 14 points. Mm-hmm. And uh, most of it was in the fourth quarter to see that, you know. And we had been preaching about lane line drives and how we needed to you know, get to the free throw line. She had two and ones, you know, with those 14 points. So, you know, I thought she was big for us. And then on the defensive side also, she was big. You know, she brought a lot of, in- she brings a lot of energy. You know, she's still learning the system, but it's good to see those last two. Actually, uh, at Texas State, she had a really good game. And then now to see her have another one, uh, hopefully we can kind of build on that. Speaking of the Bobcats, they are in town this week uh, for your first home game in 51 51- Days. I know that's kind of kind of hard to believe, but uh, it's got to be great to be back in the dome. You split a pair with with this team uh, earlier in the month. You only played them uh, about thirty days ago. You lost by eight in the first one. Came back to win the second one by twenty five. Um, Coach Mike Murphy from the men's team and I were talking about how when you're playing this the same team this many times in a short period. You know, adjustments that you're making from one game to the other are going to be critical. Are oh, they huge? You know, you're, you're trying to find any little edge you can get, uh, and, and uh, you know, I think we've we've seen some. And actually, you also grow as a team uh, that quickly. By the time you play the team again, you you might be a little different. Like for us, Ty Dusset's available. She wasn't available right. that first game. So now we're going to be able to do some different things, maybe on the inside. We'll be able to guard a little bit better on the inside, too. And so we're, you know, we're seeing, and then we got some of the youngsters kind of growing. Uh, so, you know, we're, di- I think we're a different team going into this game. But, you know, so are they. You know, they just uh, swept ULM. And, you know, so it's kind of a- anxious to see, you know, what's going to be different. You know, it's going to be different. Even yeah. though it seemed like it would be the same, it's right. going to be different. Well, best of luck this weekend. Can't wait to have you guys back in the Cajun Dome. Those games are Friday at 6, Saturday at 4, and we'll have all highlights and reaction next week on Inside Louisiana Athletics. Come see the good guys and discover the courtesy experience at Courtesy Buick GMC in Lafayette. Get $12,000 off your choice of a 2020 Buick Envision or a 2021 GMC Sierra 1500 Texas Edition. At Courtesy Buick GMC in Lafayette. I mean, we could have. I know where you're going. Mm. No, we couldn't have. You're right. I was going to say, we could have got one and shared, nah, that but was, that's that not true. Gonna work. Sonic Extra Long Ultimate Cheese Steaks. That, that wouldn't work. We all have dreams. I want to dance. I like to build things. I want to explore. For over 120 years, the University of Louisiana at Lafayette has made it possible for young dreams to become realities. So go ahead, dream big. We'll help you make those dreams come true. Come see the good guys and discover the courtesy experience at Courtesy Buick GMC in Lafayette. Get a 2020 Buick GX for $17,988 or a 2021 GMC Acadia for only $26,988 at Courtesy Buick GMC in Lafayette. You know, the faculty uh, will be impacted by advance. Uh, but, but really, the faculty are the ones who have driven for decades uh, this significant educational experience here. You know, it's their passion and their love of students 
that have made undergraduate research and creative works, uh, experiential learning in general, available to our undergraduate students. But this is going to provide a mechanism for faculty to reach more students and, and provide the resources so that these faculty can entice more students into uh, the experiential uh, learning experience. When it comes to um, professors, from a professor perspective, we are constantly looking to get students involved, you know, not just in the classroom. I mean, we, we want that student that's going to raise their hand and engage. And we're actually looking, though, for not just that student, but for every student to engage in that same way. You know, that said, um, it takes a lot of resources to not just do our own work, but to train other students to do it. When I think about um, my lab, for example, there is a, there's kind of my line of research and what I would do if I were just doing my own work and not mentoring anybody. Um, and then there's all of the pieces involved in getting those students to engage in research in a meaningful way. There are um, you know, financial resources, there are training resources. If I want to teach my students not just psychology, but how to do research of psychology, and not just psychology, but my particular area of psychology, that's a big burden for me to overcome. You know, I've got to convince them that it's important, um, which I think just having the advanced program in place does. Um, I've got to convince them or help them find resources, financial resources, so that they can take time off work or travel to a conference to present their work. Um, you know, and I've got to provide these fundamental skills that are about research that really aren't my expertise. Um, so what the advanced um, program does for UL Lafayette professors is it provides us with extra resources to support those students, providing them with, with uh, just the support of having an agency that's within the university that's entirely devoted to this little bit extra that they're trying to do. Courtesy Bruce Art is more than just a dealership, it's an experience. It's fast and reliable service. And it's always incredible deals. Get 11,000 off on a 2020 Chevy Silverado 1500 Crew Cab or get a 2021 Chevrolet Silverado 1500 for only $29,988. This has got the steak and the sizzle. The tots on this are just crispy and they're flavorful. This will oh. keep you out of my tots. Sonic Extra Long Ultimate Cheese Steaks. Yeah, this might keep me out of your tots. Like I would go with the signature strawberry limeade, add in cranberry. It'll give you that kick like right there in the back. Sonic Ultimate Drink Stop. This muscle right here. It might be a little tart for me. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Inside Louisiana Athletics. Join us next week for more Raging Cajuns coverage. Go Cajuns. <laughs>